Welcome, Christian. Oh, here comes Dimitri. And Ramon, how are you guys today? Uh, hi. Yeah, I'm doing fine. Good. Great to have you here. Hi, Dimitri. Yeah, same. Hi. Hi. We're going to let a few people collect, and then we'll get started in about 8.03. So if you need a cup of coffee, you can go grab it. So Christian and Ramon, you're new here. You want to say hello and introduce yourselves? I'm Raman. I'm from India. So I basically work on NLP and speech recognition. Uh, so we have been using BBC for past one year. So where we uh, used to maintain our raw speech data sets and our pre-processed speech data sets. So it's been a while. And so we are also familiar with Streamlight. So I was wondering, you know, so I was just curious about this. So that's, that's it. So, I mean, I was just looking for the possibilities. So, you know, so I, basically my idea is, so I want to create a streamlight page where, you know, I want to run evaluation, you know, in real time. So I was looking for that. Uh, I, I do that. I, I do that on uh, a computer vision models, not NLP, but uh, okay. I think you, you could adapt this. Okay. Okay. Hey, Casper. Hey. Hello. Hey. Okay, as promised, let's get started. Hello everyone, I'm Jenny DeFigaretto, the Community Manager here at Iterative. Today we are very excited to have Antoine Tubans, Head of Science at Sikora. He will show us how to create an integration with DVC and Streamlit to create a customizable web UI which you can configure in any way you want so that you can help with your communications between your team members, stakeholders, or clients, or all of the above. So while we are working hard to bring you much of this functionality in Studio, in the meantime, Antoine created a way to have this right now using the integration with Streamlit. So with that, I turn the floor over to Antoine. So uh, thank you, Jenny. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, so I will talk about DVC and Streamlit and uh, how together can work to, to build a, a very customizable, customizable app to, to visualize data. So uh, first, let me, let me introduce myself. My name is Antoine Toubans. Uh, I'm French. I live in a, in a small town here near Paris where I work. Uh, I work in, uh, in a company called, uh, called Sikara. It's a consulting firm in Paris. Uh, what we do is that we build a custom solution for our clients. Uh, we are a team of uh, 30 employees with uh, 20 data scientists. And uh, as I said, we, we have many, we work on many different uh, fields. We do computer vision, NLP, recommendation systems, and others. And we have many clients uh, with very, very different needs. Uh, they have different uh, infrastructure, code, tools, and uh, they are at various level of uh, AI maturity. So this is one of our challenge uh, when we, we want to define our ML stack because uh, today in the market, there are many, many, many tools to do uh, machine learning. And uh, in my opinion, most of them are kind of monolithic, uh, some kind of something that does everything for you, like uh, tracking the data, running, uh, dealing with uh, the infrastructures, uh, dealing with uh, GPU clusters and stuff like that. And uh, this is not what we need at Sigar because we, we have a huge viability among our clients. So instead of that, we, we need uh, actually bricks, small bricks that, uh, that are small, that do one purpose and that, that, that we can uh, integrate with uh, each other. So this is why we, we love DVC at Sika. We have been uh, using DVC for, for a while now uh, because it's, uh, it's small. It has one purpose, which is tracking data. And, uh, you can integrate it with almost everything. Uh, plus, there are many other bricks that are coming, like DVC Studio, CML, and so on. So we, we really like uh, DVC at Sikara. So we, we use DVC for tracking the data, our data sets, uh, for running training pipelines, for evaluating our algorithms, to version our models, to deploy models, 
And uh, now let me uh, show you uh, a typical pipeline. So it's a, it's a simple example I, uh, I built to, to illustrate uh, this, uh, this talk. So it's not a, a, a real one. It's a, it's a training code uh, I took from Google. It's a, it's a code to train a binary classifier on the cat versus dog dataset. So uh, basically the, the pipeline had four stages. Uh, the four two stages are for uh, fetching the data and splitting the data set in train val test subsets. Then I have a train uh, stage and then an evaluation stage. So let me show you what it looks like. So this is the, the repository uh, DVC streamlit example I created for the, for the talk. So this is a, the DVC uh, YAML file that defines uh, the pipeline. If, if you are familiar with DVC, there is nothing fancy here. It's uh, just a four stage pipeline. And as I said, uh, I didn't write the, the code. I just adapted from the, the Google Colab. So here is the, the train uh, script, for instance. So what it does is that uh, it loads the train data set, the validation data set, it creates uh, a small CNN model, then uh, it trains it. And at the end, it saves the, the, the best model. Um, here in the pipeline, you can see that uh, I have uh, parameters that are defined in uh, this file, params.yml file. So for instance, the, the train stage, it has two params which are train and model, which correspond to, to those two keys. And this define uh, how I will train my model. For instance, uh, I know if I uh, change the learning rate and uh, I will train on one epoch so that it's fast and I will change the, the backbone, for instance, or by net. B2 and say I want to retrain the model with these parameters. So here I can see what I change. So I simply run DVC repro and it, should, it will re execute the, the pipeline. So the, the first two stages didn't change, so it's skipping. And now it's uh, it's uh, running the train stage. Uh, as you can see, uh, there is no logs. The logs are streamed in a, in a file. That that is something that we do a lot now, which is that um, in our dvc.yml file, every time we run a command, we we stream the logs in a file. Here, for instance, that we uh, version with dvc. This is very convenient to uh, to keep the log and use DVC to, to, to track them. So if I want to, to see what's going on in my training, I simply, I can tail the log file, train. Okay, so the training, it's already finished. And I think now it's going in the evaluation stage. Uh, so Something else I would like to, to share with you is that uh, how do we uh, inject our parameters in our scripts? Uh, you see here the, the train script. It has uh, two parameters that are train and model, but uh, I don't inject them in the command line here. Instead, uh, what we do is that uh, I import directly parameters from uh, a Python uh, parameter file here. And what it does is that it, it will simply uh, pass the YAML parameter file and then create this Python constant variable here uh, with some uh, preparation, for instance, uh, in the in the YAML file, in YAML file, you, you can only have a scalar value or strings. 
So for instance, uh, the backbone of my model, it's uh, mobile net v2 here, it's, it's a string. In the params.py uh, file, what I do is that I will get the string here and then I will lose I will use this locate function to dynamically load the, the corresponding module. And the backbone then it's injected in the in the train uh, script. It's here. And it's directly instantiated here. So this is very convenient because uh, you have a single params that by files that parse the parameters and then it's uh, injected in all my scripts. So this is a split data set here. I use these params. Uh, in the evolution one, it's similar here. I use these params and so on. So, okay, uh, the, the training is done. So that's great. Uh, I will not commit the results. My training. Here it goes. And now um, I will show you other DVC features. Uh, DVC it tracks data and it also allows you to 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 track in a better way some specific values like uh, metric, for instance. So here in the in the dvc.cml file, in the evaluation in the evaluate stage, you can see that I have a defined a matrix, which is this file matrix.json. So let's see what it looks like. It's here. So it's a JSON with two key, uh, and it contains uh, the test set length and the accuracy. The accuracy being uh, the the number of images in the test set that are correctly classified. So with DVC, uh, what I can do is that I can use the DVC uh, command line interface to see uh, the current value of my metrics. So here, for instance, uh, I can see the current accuracy, which is uh, 92%. So let's say I want to, uh, to compare the current matrix with uh, say um, the matrix in the master branch. I can do this and now I have the new value, the old value and the change. This is pretty nice. Uh, it allows me to uh, quickly uh, see how my matrix uh, evolves. Uh, I can also look at uh, every value of this matrix by doing DVC matrix shows minus a something like that evaluations matrix. Yeah, and here you see all the value of the matrix for all the commits uh, in my history. Um, something else you can do if you want more uh, more complex data visualization is that you, you can use plots. So in uh, my evaluation script, uh, something I do is that I compute all prediction for uh, images in the test set and I save the results in this file, predictions.csv. So it's a CSV file with two columns which are two labels. This is the, the actual label, is, uh, either it's a cat or a dog, and the predicted label. Uh, from this uh, CSV file, uh, I would like to uh, say to, to, to build a, a confusion matrix. To do that, uh, I can use a DVC plot with the confusion template, which is by default in DVC. So here I just provide the, the name of the two columns. And then if I want to, to plot my um, confusion matrix, and I simply run DVC plots data evaluation predictions.csv. Not that. Okay, so it generates an HTML file 
that I will show you. And here it goes. You have the confusion matrix that was a uh, that was uh, automatically uh, built by DVC, and uh, it's a nice uh, visual way to to see uh, what's going on in my train model. Uh, yet, I think uh, it has some limitations because um, uh, data visualization in the command lines are limited to to scalar value, of course, and uh, you have this. Um, plots, uh, DVC plots framework, which is great, but uh, it's it's still limited to uh, to scalar values or a series of values. You cannot easily uh, show other kind of data such as images or, uh, or text or stuff like that. And also it, it's not very interactive. Uh, it does not provide the real UI. You cannot play with the data, uh, click on buttons and filter the data dynamically or stuff like that. Uh, which is okay because uh, uh, in my opinion, DVC, it's, uh, it should be uh, focused on tracking the data. Uh, and I do not expect DVC to, to do all these kind of things. To, to illustrate this, I, I build uh, this this, uh, this graph. Here you have the the more expressive data visualization axis, and here you have more data comparison. And in my mind, DVC is somewhere like that. And what I would like to do in my data scientist job is to go somewhere here. So it's time now to introduce Streamlit, which is another brick in our, in our stack. Uh, Streamlit, it's a tool that allows you to, to build uh, very quickly uh, web app, uh, data apps. Uh, even if you don't know how to, to develop front-end uh, web applications. So I will create a Python file, let's say uh, stdemo.py. This is uh, my Python file for my uh, Streamlit app. So let's start with something simple. So I import Streamlit, I set the, the page title, and let's start the app. So I simply run Streamlit run the name of the file I just created. And here it goes. And I will put them aside, just like that. Uh, let's say I want to write something. And you see it's here and it has auto reloading. So if I modify here, you can see the result uh, in the meantime here. So DVC, it's really good at um, uh, data visualization. So uh, let's say you have, a, I don't know, uh, a data frame, for instance, a pandas data frame. Here, so I, I just create a simple data frame with random value. What I can do is uh, ask Streamlit to, to display this. So I simply write st write df, and here it goes. I have my data. It can also display any kind of data, such as uh, images or video. So for instance, here, here you have a video and uh, it's also very good for uh, interaction. So let's say I want to, to have a select box with uh, two options. Options, uh, DVC, Streamlit. And here it goes. I have now a select box with two options. Uh, how do I, I use that? I can retrieve the, the selected option directly in Python like this, selected option like this. And now I can do uh, whatever I want with it. For instance, I can write it here. Here you see, if I, modif if I change the options, it's here on the end of the the Python script here, and uh, it uh, it, show, it shows you uh, which option I, I choose. 
So this is Streamlit. Uh, at Ikara, we use uh, Streamlit a lot to uh, to share uh, analysis uh, among data scientists and also to 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 share the result of our uh, experiments to the, the client, which we with, with uh, sometimes non technical person. We use it to explore the data set. To uh, what we can do also is to uh, expose the model. For instance, uh, we do a lot of computer vision, and what we can do with Streamlit is that you can have a form where you upload your image, and then uh, it runs the model on that image and show you the result. So uh, now I'm going to show you what uh, what what we can do uh, with uh, DVC and Streamlit together. So, where is it here? The first thing, the first thing I would like to do is to have a, a, a selector, a, a select box like, like the one I did before between uh, DVC and Streamlit, but to choose a commit. Why? Because um, uh, when I train uh, my pipelines, the result is stored in some commit here. So you see the last commit here. This is my last training. And what I want is a, a, a selector to, to choose a, a model, a train model. So let's do that. So to do this, I will use The, the, the Git Python API. And what I do is that I retrieve all commits here that modify the dvc.log file, meaning it's a commit where I uh, probably uh, retain the model. And here you see, uh, I simply write in Streamlit uh, the, the, the list of these commits. Now uh, that I have the commit, it's very easy to uh, to add a select box, just like I did before. I don't need that. Here. No, not here. Sorry, this one. So here I created a, a select box, uh, choose your commits, the options are all the commits, and I have a formatting function to for the, the rendering. So here you see I have my four commits, including the last one I just did at the beginning of the, the talk by some training. Uh, now that I have that, what I would like to do is to, to show the predictions corresponding to uh, the, this, this train model, the model uh, I choose. So to do that, I will use uh, the DVC API, uh, Python API here. Uh, the, the open function that allows you to, to read a, a file that is tracked with DVC. So uh, here I, want, I would like to open the predictions.csv file. So it's uh, the one that is produced by the evaluation stage. It's, uh, it's here and it's tracked with DVC. It's not tracked with Git. So what I do is I have uh, this uh, load prediction function that simply open the file with the DVC API open function, provided a, a commit hash and it, uh, it read it with uh, pandas. And uh, now what I can do is load the prediction from the selected commit here. I just get from the select box and uh, show it in Streamlit. So here it goes. And this is the predictions for the selected model. So if I change the model here, the data frame changes as well. Uh, and say now, uh, what I want is not to show this data frame. I want to only to see uh, the, the ones where the model uh, is wrong. So to do that, one predictions, I simply get the lines where uh, true label is different from predicted label. 
like that. And here we go. So it looks like, okay, I have all these images where the model is wrong. This is good, but uh, I don't get uh, a lot of information from that. What I would like to do is to, to directly show the image now. But to do that, uh, I can use directly the Streamlit, uh, Streamlit as a, a way to, to plot images. So I simply uh, take all lines in the wrong prediction data frame, and then I show the corresponding image, just like that. And here it goes. I have all the images where the model is wrong. And I can change uh, the, the model and uh, the, the displayed image with a, will change as well. So for instance, this one, the, the model uh, think it's a dog and it's actually a cat. So, this is great. And let's say now I would like to build uh, some interface where I, I see all the train models and I want to, uh, to see the, all the parameters I used to, uh, to, to train those models. So let's try this. So here it goes. So this is my Streamlit app. Just like before, I get all the commits that modify the dvc.log file. And now what I would like to do is to retrieve uh, the parameters that were used to uh, train the model. To do that, I will look in the dvc.log uh, file. Ooh, I'm sorry, this one. So in the dvc.log file, in the train stage here in params, params.html, here you have all the parameters that were actually used to train that model. So all I need to do is to uh, retrieve all the dvc.log files for every train model in uh, different commits. Um, to do that, I need to, to be able to open a file uh, at any commit tracked with dvc. So I uh, get this function. It's a, it's a bit hacky, but what it does is that uh, it takes as argument a pass to a file and a commit hash, and it will compute the, the diff between the first commit and the, the commit I want for this file, and then it streams the, 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 the file. With that, I can open the dvc.log file at any commit. Now that I have that, it's very easy to uh, say, uh, get some information. So here I, I build a, a get a model info function that takes as argument a commit, uh, commit uh, hash. And what it does is that it uses this git open function to open the dvc.log file at that commit and to also open the matrix.json file at that commit. And then it returns some information about the train model, like uh, here the, the learning rate, the backbone I used and the accuracy. And now that I have this, it's very easy to do, uh, to get all the information from uh, all models. So I do get model info Actually, I have it here. It's easier. Here. So I create a data frame where I simply uh, get all model information for all commits. And now what I can do is plot this. And here it goes. I have a, a table with my four trainings. And I have the learning rate, and I have the backbone and the accuracy. And it's very convenient because here I can add whatever I want. 
uh, I don't know, uh, for instance, if I want to add uh, the, the date of the commit, I can do commit, committed date time, say, and here it goes. I can add, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, image size. Okay, it was not that. Inside. Okay, and just like that, I can add uh, whatever information I need in, in my table. So of course, it's not uh, as neat as DVC Studio or Interpass like MLflow or stuff like that, but uh, with DVC, you can do whatever you want. Uh, for instance, if I want to, to plot, say, uh, a graph uh, to see the evolution of the accuracy, I can do something like that. Accuracy. So here, DVC, it renders a, a line chart with uh, the evolution of the accuracy. So it's very uh, easy to, to custom this, uh, this dashboard. So to go further, let's say now you want to, uh, to have an interface to directly try the model. You want to pick uh, the, the image you want and run the model on it. To do that, we'll go back here. I keep the list of commits. To do that, I will need uh, my commit selector just as before that. Okay. And now I need a function to, uh, to load the model corresponding to the selected commit. Uh, it's a bit trickier now because uh, the, 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 the usual way to, to, to load a model, if I look uh, say at the evaluation script, here. So this one, at some point, it will load a model here. It, use the, the, it uses the TFKRAS load model functions that take as argument a pass to a folder that contain uh, several files uh, for the model. So if I look at what it looks like, it's tree data train model. So it looks like this. You have assets, you have save model, you have variables, you have several stuff. It's not a single file. And now what I need to do is to call this function uh, on a, a train model that is a version in, not in my current uh, workspace, but from any commit. And uh, to do this, I, I didn't uh, figure out how to use the DVC API open function. So maybe there is a way, but I didn't find it. So I write uh, this function. So let me show you how it works. There. So this load model function, it takes as argument uh, commit hash. And what it does is that uh, there is a, um, a path to a model cache folder. <clears throat> First, it tries to load the model directly from the, the model cache directory. If the model is not present, it uses the <clears throat> DVC get function. So this is the Python uh, internal DVC API uh, function, but it's uh, similar to do DVC get. So here, what I do is DVC get uh, the folder where the model is set, and I write it to the model cache here. And then when it's downloaded, I uh, simply load it with uh, Keras. And now that I have this, it's very easy to do model equal load model uh, selected commit, something like that. Okay, uh, the last one, it, it, uh, it doesn't work because I didn't DVC push, but if I do 
previous one, it should work. Okay, so now the model it is loaded. Now that I have the model, it's very easy to uh, to to add uh, here something to upload an image and run a prediction on it. So let's do that. First, I use a file uploader function from DVC, and here it goes. Can upload whatever image I want. So let's say. Uh, I want to try my model in this image. So now uploaded file uh, is uh, the images I just uploaded here. For instance, I can show you here. So I use the image function from Streamlit and I can uh, show you the, the, the image I just uploaded. So now I need to, to take this image, apply the model preprocessing and run the model on it and show you the prediction. So let's do that. And here it goes. So uh, here, what did I do? Uh, I need a pillow to load the image. Uh, I need the image size for the, the preprocess for the preprocessing. So I load the image, I resize it, I apply the, the, the preprocessing, then I run the model on it. And then here you see here I have two uh, streamlit columns. Here, so uh, it's uh, Streamlit uh, uh, functions to do a bit of uh, layout in, uh, in in your page. On the first column, I write the prediction here. If the prediction is uh, above uh, zero point five, it's a it's a cat. Otherwise, it's a dog. And the score. Uh, in the right column, I show you the image and the resized image. So here, for instance, it says it's a cat, but it's not that sure. The confidence is uh, is quite low, and I can choose whatever model I want. So here it's loading the model. So let's wait a little bit, and here it goes. The model is better here, eighty-three percent. So, so that's it for the, the model inference. Uh, a, a last trick I would like to share uh, with you is um, if you remember at the beginning of the presentation, I showed you uh, the, the confusion matrix that I plotted with, um, with DVC. I think it's here, yeah, this one. So uh, when you do DVC plots, it renders uh, the, the, the plots with uh, VIGA. And uh, actually, you, you can integrate uh, VIGA in DVC. So I will quickly show you how to integrate this in, um, in a DVC Streamlit application. So yeah, the first thing I need to do is to um, to get the JSON file corresponding to the Viga um, confusion matrix here. So to do this, I will do DVC plots like before, but I will use the option show Viga. And here you see it outputs directly the JSON file corresponding to the, the, the Viga confusion matrix. So let's say I save it to uh, File confusion matrix dot JSON. Okay. So now all I need to do is to open this confusion matrix dot JSON. Okay. 
Matrix, Quar, and JSON. Okay, it worked. So now let's say I want to, to see what's inside. So I will plot it in Streamlit. So this is the content of the JSON file. And uh, what I need to do now is to use Viga light chart confusion matrix. It will not work because what it needs, oh, sorry. Actually, it needs uh, only the data and the spec. So the data, let's say, SPD, PD, data frame, confusion matrix, put the data, it's in data values, data values. So let's see what it looks like. Okay, great. I have the data that is in here. And now I need the, the spec. The spec are just in the, in the spec key here. Okay. And here it goes. And you can do this with with uh, uh, whatever uh, plot you you can generate with DVC, because it's uh, completely agnostic who, with uh, what is behind. You just need uh, Viga data and specs. Uh, I think I'm done here. Um, I hope you, you enjoyed this uh, presentation. And uh, if you have any questions. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, no, but every, everything was epic. That was awesome. Yeah. Yes. It's really cool. A Thank lot you. of awesome material. There is a, everything I, I showed you, it's, a, it's I, I created a, a Git repository. Uh, I will uh, put it in my slides and share it with you. You, you can uh, check out the, the code if you want. OK, great. Uh, so I have a question though. Yeah. yeah. So it's uh, with respect to training actually. So we just completed our data part. I mean, we are, so we are familiar with push pull and version everything. So mm -hmm. we just moved to our model training part. So I just, uh, you know, uh, so can you suggest some good practices so that we can, so anyway, we have to version our models too, right? So is there any suggestion from your side? so that we follow, we can follow uh, for training models and versioning them, something like that, yeah. Mm. One thing that we do is that uh, usually in our projects, we have a uh, training pipelines that are very similar to this one. Okay. And uh, we do a, a lot of exploration. We, we train models, some, sometimes it works, sometimes it, it, it don't work. And okay. um, we have a, a separate folder from the, the pipeline when, okay. where we, we copy past different versions of uh, the model and we track them directly with DVC add. Uh, DVC add. It's a, a kind of model registry, but it's completely separated from the, the DVC pipeline. Uh, I don't know if it's a, a good practice actually. Uh, it, is, it was more convenient for us to, to do it this way because we can uh, really uh, manually choose which model we, we push to production. Otherwise, I don't know, uh, use DVC as much as you, you can to track uh, the, the, the more data you, you can. For instance, okay. here it's, uh, I track the, the base weights model, the logs and some training metrics, but not that much. Uh, maybe you, you can track with DVC more version of the, the, the model weights or stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, um, I have a question, um, Rob here. Um, how, what, what's the, what are the limitations of, of Streamlit compared to some of the other um, sort of 
uh, front endless um, frameworks that are out there. Uh, is it just e is ease of use the main? That sounds like that's the main advantage for using this. Uh, is that just as a result you're basically giving up flexibility? Uh, the, the main advantage is the, the, the flexibility, and it's very easy to to use, and very simple. You you don't you absolutely uh, don't need any uh, uh, web front end uh, skills. Uh, one limitation I see it's uh, that it's not easy to to put in production. Okay. Uh, I, I think they are trying to to improve this, uh, but. Uh, at least uh, in our use case, we use it only uh, in the data scientist team, or uh, we, we start a stream lead to, to show something to the clients, but uh, not in production. Okay, thanks. Yeah, can you use templates at all uh, to, if you wanted to get into sort of structure, like use CSS and HTML templates and things like that, or, or is it pretty much just they're slotted below each other as they I are never in the code itself? I never tried it, but uh, I know you can, uh, it's not that easy to, to, to put your custom CSS or stuff like that, but you can build a um, But I think component. it is possible. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, yeah, it's I possible. think it's possible. Yeah, it's okay. possible. Yeah. In okay. You okay. can include HTML and CSS. That's great. But that one problem I see is the scalability. So it, it doesn't scale the stream like, so it doesn't scale. Yeah. You can just go to Hugging Face website. So their production website is uh, done using Streamlight. So it doesn't hmm. scale much. So even selection box and everything hangs. So mm. yeah, like uh, like he said, it's good for you know internal use, just for demo purpose. Okay, thank you. Oh, great discussion. Does anyone else have questions? I have maybe this is a little outside of the scope here, but I have. Um, <clears throat> I'm curious about uh, version control for where I work, but I work with huge data sets, so. Uh, they're about 1.5 um, terabytes. Is it? Uh, are there obvious? Uh, so when we're doing really small models, it seems really easy to to have things zipping back and forth quickly. Are there sort of limitations that you see using DVC for tracking data uh, using uh, with with such large data sets? Uh, I, I never tried DVC with uh, uh, data sets that large. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess the biggest one. The biggest files we track are like a few gigabytes, but not more. And it okay. works fine. Uh, Robert, uh, I have a quick suggestion though. So so I mainly work with audio speech recognition. So we have millions and millions of audio files. So okay. we have data around 20 dB. So, so we initially faced this uh, scaling problem of versioning all the audio files. So what we did was we came across a web library called web data set. So what it does is, it just uh, tars the, uh, it just searches web data set. So what it does is it creates a tar, a tar archive of all the small files. So that, so for example, uh, so we have 10 million files. So when we convert them into a tar archives of each 5 GB, it comes around to just 10 files so that it is easy to maintain, you know, version controlling them, everything gets easier. Okay, great. Yeah, I'll check that out offline, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, so it has tight integration with PyTorch and everything else. So it is yeah, a nice my, my sort of the opposite yeah. problem. I deal with genomic data sets, so they're like, okay. you know, they're like hundreds and hundreds of gigs for one, for one file. So, okay. but I'll check okay. that out offline. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, fine. Cool. Thank you. This is great. I love when discussion happens between different people at the office hours. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Anybody else have questions? or something to contribute, ideas? Uh, just one comment for Robert. If there is some issues with the performance and stuff, uh, please don't hesitate to ask on Discord uh, because like we know how to <laughs> suggest, like we have some suggestions with uh, performance and can help. That's great. So this is actually the first meetup I've ever gone to in my life, so. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll do that. I, I'll definitely do some follow up and, and you know reach out and, and hopefully continue this discussion. But I, I really enjoyed this. Yeah. Great. Thanks for being here. Yeah, just a quick comment on that. Yeah, you, you can give it a shot also, Robert. The, it tends to be that uh, because DVC stores things at a file level right now, having many, many small files can sometimes be uh, a lot slower than having a small number of large files. So it may oh, not okay. be as painful as you expect. Yeah. Right. 
Because essentially it's 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 computing hashes and stuff, right? So just sitting there and waiting, yeah. and waiting, and waiting, and waiting is the, the part That's... I'm not looking forward to. Yeah, yeah, and 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 size usually is not a problem. Problem is a uh, number of files. Uh, okay. As an example, we have clients with uh, seventy terabytes of data under DVC control, uh, but those are videos, uh, quite a big files. I have not problem with uh, in general in performance. Okay, cool. So I have a question with DVC though. So, so since uh, as I told, we have uh, you know. TBs of files, star archives. So it's uh, one star archive would be around five GB or something. So so we have around twenty TB of data. So is so would it be useful if we use DVC stream APIs so directly download from cloud object storage and caching it in our local machine? Say we have a GPU, a lot of GPUs, but each has a space restriction of around one TB. Since we have 20 TB of data, if you want to train our model on all the 20 TB of data, uh, what do you recommend? So is there any good practices? Uh, so obviously catch doesn't work, right? So once you catch first 1 TB of data, then you move to second 1 TB of data, this, this catch become useless, right? So is there any advices from your side, DVCN? Um. Uh, yeah, so there is IPI, right? Uh, in IPI, you can just get yeah. link and kind of stream stream this okay. to your machine. Uh, the question is like, can you actually unarchive as a stream? Yeah. So it might be a limitation, right? Okay. Yeah, so that's... So we also came across another limitation. So, so we have our own private object storage service. So we, we don't, we cannot afford to have S3 or Google storage or something like that. So what I did was I wrote a monkey patch on top of DVC to support our own object storage. So right now we don't use S3 or Google storage or something. So we use our own object storage. So we, we have limitations on those APIs, but still that's why we haven't tried streaming APIs from DVC. Uh, so that's the one cool thing that I did on top of DVC. Cool. Yeah, yeah that's, that's yeah, really interesting. I think Python's gzip package supports streaming, right? So presumably what, what, it should work. What? Can you repeat again? So, so I think Python. Python's gzip package supports okay, okay. streaming. So I okay. guess you should be able to give it a stream file and it should be able to unpackage from the stream for you. Okay. I'm not sure if internally it needs to cache the entire file in RAM. Presumably it doesn't. Okay. I'll yeah, that's, that's a good idea. That actually can help with mm -hmm. with this scenario. Yeah. Yeah. Again, yeah, also I'll, I'll... the same comment as for Robert, I guess. Like, get in touch with us with the issues that you have on that because it's yeah, definitely yeah, a use I, case. I, I, yeah, I understand yeah, I use sometimes it's not realistic to bring the data locally and then read it in. So, uh, yeah, if you have, if you're running into issues with it, let us know because I think it's something that you know I definitely am interested in us supporting better and. Um, yeah, and I think that's really cool what you said you're doing with the, with the uh, your custom backend there. If you have, yeah. I don't know if you've taken a look at. We've been working recently on on some of that and and making it easier to kind of create your own plugins um, so that you can have your own sort of file system um, that yeah. you're using as a remote. So um, yeah, we might be able to point you in a, a good direction on how to like incorporate that um, in an easy way into into the the current package. Okay. okay. Yeah, I use your Discord for Yeah, I use. Okay. So if I yeah, have any... Yeah, you might already know it all, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, there's a question in chat about Pandas profiling for structured data. Yeah, I saw that. What, me, MH, do you want to ask that? Are you asking that in relation to DVC or to Streamlit or just in general? I think Pandas profiling, yes, works with structured data. I've used it before. But were you asking in relation to DVC or the uh, oh to streamline. Okay. Does pandas do, to Antoine? Do you know if and it integrates? Somehow? Yeah. Um. Actually, I don't know. I don't know pandas profiling. So I'm just looking right now at what it is. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Ramon answered in there. It saves as HTML. You don't need Streamlit for it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Kendra's profiling is pretty cool at the beginning of a project. I like it. <laughs> yeah. 
Are there any more questions? I'm gonna put some um, links in the chat. First of all, thank you, Antoine, for the great presentation and thank all of you for being here today. At September's thank office, you. Thank you. Um, at September's office hours meetup, we will have our own developer advocate, Malaysia McGregor, presenting using experiments for transfer learning. And um, I'm gonna put that link in the chat as well as the reporting to our last office hours, which was on using R with DVC and a really great demo on DVC Studio. So those will be there. And um, all of you, like we would love to hear from you. If you are interested in presenting any of what you're doing at one of the office hours, we would love to have you. I'm gonna put my information in the chat now. And so um, until next time, we will see you in Discord in the meantime, but happy ML Opsing. Thanks everyone. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Yep. Thanks, thanks all. Bye.